independent. I've been raised to be an independent thinker. And I love how God uses my husband and I. We're not the normal people. We tag team. Every time we preach, we tag team it out. And even as we preach today, we came from Exodus, the 17th chapter. And the same message applies here, even the 11th and the 12th yeah. scripture. Yeah. When we talked about Moses, when they were in a fight against the Amalekites, the heirs of the world and the Amalekites, and we began to talk about through the 11th scripture and the 12th scripture about how it was a supernatural fight. Some of us are in a supernatural fight, even though they were fighting. Now we're talking about Moses as, more, as, as he lifted up his arms. And as he stretched up his arms, as long as they were up, the Israelites won. But when they got heavy and he decided to just rest his arms, that's when the Amalekites prevailed. So therefore, this is the key part. He had two people. The Bible says on the left and the right, Aaron and Hur. That's right. To lift up the arms of Moses. Yeah. So as we move, we are also apostles. Apostles come to set order. And our main objective for the ministry that we went and preached was to set order and to establish who arms are you holding up? Yeah. Why are you here? And we begin to talk it through and we begin to work with that thing. And I ask you the same question. Why are you here at Day Spring? And if you do know why you're here, what are you doing to lift up your Moses' arms? That's right. That's right. What are you doing to support the men and women of God? See, because as you understand that the purpose of a pastor, the purpose of a covering, the purpose of a shepherd is to act as an intercessor. So when you have an intercessor that's put the intercessor, someone that moves in the midst of, right in between. So as you go home and you eat your chicken and your macaroni, even through the week, even when you go on your job and you're facing the things that you're going through, somebody is lifting up their arms on behalf of you. That's right, that's right. They are interceding the pastors, the angels of this house. Yeah. So what am I telling you to, to even right now? That even as they lift up their arms, they are interceding. That means the attack that was coming for you, that attack on your health, that attack on your finances, yeah. even the attack in your family with your relationship, they have blocked it. So what was meant for you is now hitting them. Yeah. Woo! And while you at home watching TV, doing whatever it is that you want to do, yeah. know that somebody is opening up their arms. Yeah. But when their arms get weak, who is going to be the Aaron and the her? Come on. Jesus. intercede and pray and fast. When you got something going on, you call and interrupt their sleep in the middle of the night. You want to keep them on the phone, talking to them and giggling on the phone with them. But are you empowering your leaders? Are you covering your leaders? You fail to realize that if you don't lift up the arms of your Moses, you're in jeopardy. Yeah. You fail to realize that if you don't lift up the arms of your Moses, they can't be successful in interceding for you. Their focus is now distracted. Woo! God sent them to intercede, sent them to feed you, sent them to empower you. But because of laziness and the spirit of apathy, and because of being distracted, they now got to take focus off of what they were supposed to do to come and panicate you. Oh, we teach strong and King of King Sinners International. That, that's just not what's in me. I don't sugarcoat, I don't sweep under the rug. I like a strong dose, so I give it how it's served to me. So why are you here? Is it for convenience? I've been going to this church for a few years. It's convenient now, I live up the street. Why are you here? Maybe you like my mother's smile. Maybe you love to sing in the choir. But is that enough to keep you rooted and on your assignment? Yes. Ooh. There's an assignment for each and every one of you. Yeah. We are big on that. We are big on discovering people's purposes, their assignment. That's what we do, my husband and I. Even as apostles, we have the gift to look at you and see what you're called to do as an evangelist, as a teacher, as a prophet, as a pastor, as a ministry of health, as a business administrator. We can recognize the call. Everyone has a purpose. You're more than just a pew warm. I tell people all the time, if you don't even know why you're on this earth, at the very bare minimum, you are called to be a problem solver. Think about it. Everybody on this earth is called to be a problem solver. That means there's a, 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 a certain uh, a solution inside of you, a specific solution inside of you that God has divinely placed there for you to solve for a specific group of people. That's why we all, that's why it's the makeup of the whole body, but I might be a thorn, you might be 
a right hand, I might be a leg. We're all having different diverse gifts, but we're all working for the same body. So what is the solution? Do you even know if I came across everyone in their pew? If I asked you, do you know the solution that you are called to solve? Can you tell me? It's amazing, even in my young age, and yes, I own it, I'm young, but I thank God for the in inheritance and the impartation of wisdom that he's given me. We talk to people that are twice our age and they still don't know why they're here. They still don't know their purpose. Going through the flow and the motion every day, confused, disoriented. You're more than just someone that just brings peppermint. You're more than just somebody that just sings in the choir. Yes, that's part of the helps in the ministry. But what solution are you solving? I tell people all the time, my assignment, I know what my solution is. I'm called to empower. Most, let me give you some hints. Some of you all might even know why you're called or what you're called to do. Let me give you some hints on your assignment. Hints on your assignment. I don't know what I'm stirred to do. I don't know my passion. I don't know my purpose. Well, what angers you? Let's start there. That's right. What gets on your nerves? What agitates you? That's a clear indication. What grieves you the most in your life? For me, I can't stand stupidity. I can't stand it. We have our personal campaign for our ministry campaign against illness because we're a supernatural ministry. Healing happens in our ministry. I don't apologize for it. That's just how we're used. Cancer, deliverance, broken bones, healed. We got the x-rays to prove it. That's the glory of God upon our ministry. But that's just a great added bonus. The clear indication and order and mission of my ministry is to identify your purpose and empower you in it. For me purposely, I know our ministry, we have a campaign against illness, but ain't proud. I have a personal campaign against stupidity. I can't stand stupidity. Can't stand, it, agi it agitates me, and I had to discover this the hard way. After getting off the phone with somebody, I was just irritated. And the Apostle Andrew, he said, what's going on? I said, I don't know, I'm just vexed in my spirit. So when I feel like that, I do an assessment. And I said, what did I do to cause me to be irritated? The only thing I did was talk to that person. Oh, what was the conversation? Someone who was stubborn, not forgetting, that didn't want to listen. See, I can deal with an ignorant person. I love ignorant. I'm ignorant on a lot of subjects. I can deal with an ignorant person. What's the difference between an ignorant person and a stupid person? An ignorant person means just don't know. Can't fault you for what you don't know. What's a stupid person? A person that knows they're ignorant in a situation, but refuses to pursue wisdom in that area. Mm. So you know you need to do better than that. You have Moses that's here to lead you on the path of prosperity, but you refuse to just come here and be a bench warmer. Instead of being active in pursuing, I tell people all the time, you have no permission to have access to anything you don't pursue. Nothing that you don't pursue, you can't gain access to. So what am I telling you today? Know your assignment. What aggravates you in the house of God? That might be a clear indication that you're called to do a work, bring forth a solution in that area. You can't stand away, maybe somebody's left unattended. That might be the burden of a ministry of helps. You can't stand away, nobody really ministers to the first lady, has her back. Maybe that's your ministry, who knows? It's a clear indication, ask yourself questions, know who you are. When you know who you are, you'll make this a more of a progressive wheel. You'll be excited to own your own and your part in the ministry. It'll be contagious. Matter of fact, people will see it and then they'll come and follow you and say, I don't know what it is about you, but I wanna be where you're at. That's right. And they'll come and they'll be a partaker of that as well. But if you're just sitting here and don't know why you're here, if you're sitting here just like Sunday after Sunday, you leave here and then you leave out there, I know I've been here. The Word of God is real. Yes, yes. The Word of God is life changing. The Word of God is full of life. Yes, yes, it is. But if you can't even know right now what your purpose is, how you can help, the diversity of helps, all of that, your main purpose is to be that Aaron and that her to your leaders. Mm -hmm. If you can't do anything else, pray. Yeah. Mm. If you can't do anything, The warfare, the sacrifice of your leaders. <laughs> and as a reward, you so honor. We love honor. We're big on honor in KCI. Honor is the language of the kingdom. Everything's based on honor. That's right. Everything's based on honor. 
the, the Ten Commandments. What is it, baby? <laughs> <laughs> the, the first four commandments are honoring man. But if you study and go down, the last six commandments are honoring God. Combined, all Ten Commandments are about giving honor. Amen. The Bible tells you that those that bring forth the Word of God are worthy of double honor. That's right. You want to honor somebody? Who's encouraging your faith? That's right. You want to honor somebody? Who's teaching you how to have eternity? Yeah. I don't see how we sow seeds in areas that would not yield a harvest. We sow seeds for our hair. Oh, we look good for the moment. But how's the hair honoring us? How is it helping our salvation? I'm big on that. I'm so honored. The Bible tells me in Ephesians, it says, honor thy mother and father so that thy days may be well and long. Most of us only know honor thy mother and father so that your days may be long upon earth. But Ephesians actually says, well and long. That's right. That was revelation to me. You may not have a mom and dad, but who are your spiritual parents ultimately finish your leaders? I know you call them pastor, but ultimately there's your spiritual mom and your spiritual dad. They are the watchers of your soul. How are you sowing seeds of honor into their life? Pursue it. You are protégés whether you want to receive it or not. You may think of the first lady as your sister homegirl, but have reverence for her. That might be the same thing, but that's your spiritual mom. You are a protege. Nobody else is going to tell you, I'll tell you. All of you are a protege. Well, I'm too old. Don't you know you old enough to be my daughter? I don't care. See, because I'm the type of person where I'm not afraid of being a person. So I've got to tell you how it is as a protege. How do you pursue the mentor? The purpose of a mentor is to lead
you got to get passionate about something. Yeah. And the first thing you should get passionate about is pursuing your mentor. The first thing you should get passionate about is seeking a higher wisdom from your leader. Don't just come to your leaders and whine and complain. Crack jokes here, yeah, that's good. But you know what I judge people by? Because I've been to a lot of people. You do, you're so young. Honey, let me tell you something in the spirit. It has nothing to do with your natural age. That's right. If you got a problem with it, ask Solomon. You know how old he was when he became king of providences? Come on now. But all you got to do is put wisdom from God and he only part. He was wise enough to lead those people. So I don't apologize for my age. I thank God for my age and I'm getting started at such a young age. I judge people. We have spiritual sons and daughters in all over the world. Denmark, all throughout the nations, Germany, Africa, who come and want to sit at our feet to be able to receive what we learn. That's why we have to regurgitate so fast. 800 books, 300 books on the way. We gotta get through it because people are hungry and we gotta be able to, every time I open my mouth, have something new to say. So I judge people. How do you value me? Even to my leaders, I tell you. You all know this. Everyone that says they love you, don't. I'll never leave you. I'm going to be, I'm going to have your back. Gone. So I tell people when they come to me, I love you. I say, girl, you have such a sweet spirit. I love your teachers. I need it. I say, okay, then, show me how you The greatest act of love is implementing what I teach. So if they love you, they'll implement and execute what you teach them. If they love you, they'll abide by the policies of your ministry. They'll be on time. Yeah. They'll be able to come prepared. They'll take notes. They won't just take notes because it's fashionable, but they'll chew on it through the week. If you really took the time to learn, if you really took the time to actually record, you probably wouldn't bother them with nonsense things because it was already given to you on the Sunday. What they taught on Sunday was your solution for Monday. It keeps them focused when you do your job. So I judge people by their questions. You can always tell someone who's serious about mentorship by the questions they ask you. You can always tell somebody that has your heart by the questions they ask you. They're holding up your arm. Holding up your arm. They're supposed to be an Aaron and a her. But what questions do they ask you while they're holding it up? Or do they just come with statements and complaints? Do they come inquire what can they do to make your job easier? What specifically can I pray for while I'm holding What's going on? I see they'll have a spirit of disagreement. They'll know, yeah, you keep your grace, but they'll know by the spirit something's true. They'll begin to reach in their pocket because let me tell you something, honor is also substance. We are big on tithes, as you already know. I'm a descendant of Pastor Nunn, so we're big on it. How are you being consistent in your tithes? Consistent in your tithes really helps keep their arms up and open. To keep the lights on to keep it clean, to keep it without being a burden. They should not have to struggle because on top of times you should be sowing a seed. Seeds of honor are tangible, not just with words. It's an impartation. I know you honor on those wonderful anniversary times, but it's a just because. I thought about you. I know you like this type of coffee. Sowing into your life. You shouldn't want for anything. Double honor. Holding up Moses' is honor. Why are you here? And if you are here, what are you doing? Are you an Aaron? Are you a her? Questions I ask you determines, you know, questions I love it. I tell people, conversations is the birth and place for miracles. Birth and place for miracles. You can't have anything different in your life unless you open your mouth and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Having troubles in your relationship, you got to talk about it to birth a miracle. My husband would never know my needs unless I open up and set them down and say, husband, I really would like it this way. I really would like it if we did this more. I'm birthing a miracle in my conversation. But even in the midst of the conversation, the most important part of that is questions. Questions do two things. They summon solutions or they expose deception. Example. Possibly, Pearl, I just love your teaching. I love to hear what you have to say. I just love you. Oh, yeah? Well, did you hear what I preached on Sunday? Yeah, I was on the line. Question number one. Tell me what you learned. Oh, um, I learned that you got to expand your faith. I said, well, I talked for about 45 minutes. That's general. Surely you got more detail than that. Well, you know, I was distracted and I couldn't really. I said, okay, 
This particular sermon was recorded. You can listen to the playback line. So this is Thursday. Hmm. If you know you love my teaching, you're excited about the things of God, so you say, how important was it to receive the word of God that was given that could be a solution for whatever it is you're going through? I preached on Sunday. 